Hi everyone, it's Kay Young here. A lot of you guys have asked me to share my journey to medical school, especially what kind of extracurricular activities I was involved in as an undergrad, so I decided to make this video. And before I start, I just want to make it clear that the reason I'm sharing this is by no means to say that this is what you have to do to get into medical school. I'm sharing it just to show that this was my own path among many many others out there. And I hope you find your own path and not feel like you have to fit into someone else's mold because you're a unique person with your own gifts, interests, and passion. But an important thing is to do something with your passion. How can you dive into it more? How can you make a difference in your community with your passion? For me, I'm really passionate about art. So I organized an art exhibit to raise awareness of environmental issues and I volunteered in an organization that uses art as a tool to communicate with people with special needs, which I'll talk more about in depth later. So what can you do in your given environment with the gifts that you have? This is also important in terms of medical school applications because there are going to be so many people with the same hobby and interest as you. So you'll have to do something extra to stand out and show that you are indeed passionate about that through action. So with that said, I'll break this down into categories, service and volunteer, leadership and teamwork, and my work experience. So starting with service and volunteer, I volunteered at my local hospital from grade 11 to first year of university. It's a small hospital in a rural town where I grew up, and because of that, I got to help wherever the help was needed. My main position, and also my longest position, was the one-on-one -on -one visitor for seniors. So I visited them, talk and play games with them, help them with meals, and occasionally put on a piano performance for them. And besides that, I also got to help in the ER with organizing materials, making sure that all the necessary supplies were stocked in each room and in pharmacy where I helped with packaging pills at the front desk directing people to the right places and I helped with other miscellaneous tasks like creating charts for a staff meeting and because I volunteered for a long time in various departments I have built a close relationship with my volunteer coordinator at the time and she even arranged for me to watch an operation in the OR through the glass window because she knew that I was interested in going into the medical field and that was such a cool experience. Unlike American medical schools, Canadian medical schools don't require shadowing as part of the application and I believe shadowing is actually not recommended in Canada because of confidentiality issues so shadowing opportunities are not very common. So depending on where you are and where you're planning on applying to, this might be good to keep in mind. Next is SMILE program which stands for Sensory Motor Instructional Leadership Experience and I did this for two and a half years in undergrad. And this was such an amazing experience. I worked closely with a child with Down syndrome every week and we did so many fun activities together. And volunteers like myself planned these activities that were tailored to the participants' capabilities and interests. So these were fun activities, but they were also meant to improve their social, cognitive, and physical abilities through activities like playing in the gym with other kids, swimming, reading books, drawing, dancing, and playing music. This is definitely one of the most meaningful and memorable experiences I had in undergrad. It was more than just a volunteer participant relationship, but over time we formed a strong bond that resembled more of a friendship and we grew together as we learned more about each other. And this experience taught me how to communicate and connect with people with different abilities. Next, I was involved with Alexander Society of Inclusive Arts, which is a nonprofit organization that provides people with intellectual disabilities with opportunities to learn through creative activities like art, drama, music and dancing. This was similar to SMILE in that I was paired up with a youth participant and helped them with these activities while building a friendship. This taught me that art, which has been my hobby all my life, could be more than just a personal hobby but a tool for communication as it allows for free expression of thoughts, ideas, and emotions and we could connect regardless of our abilities and backgrounds. And for the last one in this category, I tutored English to a Syrian refugee family for two summers in undergrad. I help them reinforce what they learn in class, practice conversation skills, and learn new words and phrases. Since I'm also an immigrant and I also learn English as a second language, I was able to not only understand where the difficulties arise for new learners, but also help them better by empathizing with their struggles of fitting into a new environment and therefore connecting on a personal level. 
So the next category is leadership and teamwork. I was the president of Children's Wish Club at my school. Children's Wish is a nonprofit organization that grants wishes to children with a terminal illness like going to a place they've always wanted to go or meeting a famous person. I actually started as a volunteer in my second year and I became the president at the end of my third year. We organized fundraisers and community outreach events like Krispy Kreme donut fundraiser, glow in the dark yoga nights, and raffles and draws at the farmer's market. And more on the administrative side, I facilitated our meetings and met with other executives to meet our goals for fundraising and also provide a meaningful experience for our volunteers because we wanted them to experience what kind of positive impact they were making on the children and also the community. I was a contributor and the editor for our school's peer health group. We worked with the school medical clinic and we produced monthly newsletters containing health information such as safe alcohol consumption, seasonal affective disorder, opioids and naloxone, as well as resources to help students. With the information and resources that everyone contributed, I compiled them and designed into newsletters and we distributed them throughout the campus. Next, I was an executive at my school's biology society as a banquet chair for two years. My main role was to organize and facilitate the end of the year banquet, but there were other responsibilities that all of the executives shared, such as academic help sessions, clothing sales, documentary screening, and other various social events. It was really fun working with other executives and planning events and meeting other students in my cohort as well as in other years. What I learned from these leadership and teamwork activities is the power of having a shared vision, highlighting the strengths that each of us have to create a synergistic effect and achieve a greater goal, and how leadership is more of a support role of bringing everyone together and elevating as a team rather than an authoritative role. Moving on to my work experience, from second year to fourth year, I worked three part-time jobs on top of my full course load. You might call me crazy, but it was doable. But of course, it took me some time to get used to managing my time well. So starting in my second year, I was a TA or teaching assistant in many courses such as intro biology, cell and molecular biology, human biology, and general physics. I helped students in lab, graded assignments, and sometimes I met with students on an appointment basis to help with writing lab reports. I heard that not many universities offer TA positions to undergrad students and especially second year students because those positions are usually filled by grad students, but since my university is an undergrad focused institution, we were exposed to so many opportunities which I'm really thankful for. On a similar note, I worked as a tutor since second year teaching chemistry and physics. I helped students with understanding concepts and provided tips on studying and test taking. This and the TA experience made me realize how much I enjoy teaching and it also helped me become a better communicator because you have to be mindful of who you're talking to and it sometimes requires you to think outside the box to accommodate students of different abilities and learning styles. And in my fourth year, I was an RA or a residence assistant and I was responsible for overseeing the well-being of 20 residents on my floor as well as the other 100 or so residents in the building. I organized events throughout the year to foster a sense of community like open mics, self-care sessions, board game nights, and so on. And I was on duty once a week where I did rounds to check in with the residents and went around the building to make sure that no one was punching holes in the wall. This was probably my favorite job I had in undergrad because I just loved being an RA, connecting with my residents, and working with such an amazing team and everything. There were times where I had to help residents with the transition to university, academic struggles, and mental illness, and as hard as it was sometimes, it was really rewarding when I realized that I was in a position to make that kind of impact on others. Not to mention the whole RA team who were all so amazing and I received so much support from them. I also worked as a front desk assistant at the school library for three years where I helped patrons with information retrieval from the library, finding resources, room booking, book loans, and so on. When it wasn't as busy at the library, I was allowed to read for my classes or grade assignments for my TA job, so this was a good way to multitask. Lastly, I worked as a research assistant at the Environmental Science Center since the summer after my first year and I continued with environmental research throughout my undergrad. 
I know that a lot of people think that they need medicine or health related research for med school but I want you guys to know that that is not the only option but rather there are so many possibilities that you can take so follow your true interest and passion I did my honors on the effects of BPA on development and epigenetics of snapdragons and from that experience I was able to understand health in the context of the environment and other interrelated issues like sustainability and water. There's so much I want to talk about with regards to research and the connection between environment and health, so I might make it a separate video. Let me know if you guys would like to see it. Quite a few guys have asked me how I manage my time during my undergrad, and my piece of advice is do not bite more than you can chew. As my mom always says, it's about choosing and focusing. Don't spread yourself thin, but choose what truly interests you and motivates you. Find what makes you excited and dedicate time and effort and really make something out of them. To make it work, what was important for me was to plan ahead and prioritize. At the start of the semester, I always made a term schedule as well as monthly, weekly, and daily agenda to keep track of meetings, events, and what tests and major papers were coming up so I could spread them out evenly to prevent myself from burning out. If I had a test coming up, I would usually start preparing at least a week in advance and broke it down into smaller tasks so I didn't feel overwhelmed. Breaking down into smaller chunks made me feel more in control of the things rather than being chased by deadlines. And it allowed me to make a small progress with the given time so I felt less stressed as a result. And I learned that I'm most productive when I'm decently busy but not too busy so it was good to find where that fine line was. Also, self-care was important. I made sure to put some time aside to relax and hang out with friends because mental health is important and I believe that university experience is meant to be fun and meaningful and not just jam-packed with academics and extracurriculars. I really enjoyed my time in undergrad so I hope you guys do too. And my next tip is to be introspective. Think about how one experience connects with other experiences, how it connects to medicine, what it's teaching you, and how it's transforming you as a person. I would sometimes write in my journal or make a memo on my phone whenever I had these mini epiphanies. These notes and journals I wrote came in handy when I was preparing for the interviews because I could vividly remember how I felt and what I learned. As for the final words, don't commit to an extracurricular activity just because it would look good on your resume or your application. These are not just stepping stones for getting to another place. They are opportunities for personal growth, making connections with your peers, and for or contributing to the community so make the most of them and have fun I guess the message I want to end with is that you're more than just a pre-med student. Becoming a doctor is definitely a big goal and an incredible dream to have, but this is one aspect of your life and not the entirety of your identity. So don't worry too much about whether you'll get in or not with the set of extracurricular activities that you have, but enjoy the process itself. So thank you for watching this video, I hope it was helpful, and let me know in the comments what extracurricular activities that you did. I would love to hear from you guys. And let me know if you want to hear more about my research experience or what I did during my gap year. Alright, I'm going to end this video here. So take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!